Hello again. If you watch some of my videos, you'll know that I often need a camera above the work I'm doing on the bench. Uh, a tripod doesn't always work because of the angles involved. Uh, and I want to devise some system of having a camera above me. So a few months ago, I made this device here out of an old photographic enlarger. If you look on my channel, you'll find a video where I talk about this. It's been very useful, but it is a bit cumbersome. Sometimes when I'm working on my fret saw, uh, I need a camera above the work, and this does tend to get in the way, this cumbersome heavy table. Uh, and I wanted to devise a system where I could have something above the fret saw, uh, without having this table in the way, so I thought what I need is something that clamps on. So I had to sort about it in my junk shed and find some bits and pieces and see if I can make something up. So the first thing I had to do was to find a clamp. So without further ado, let's get over and I'll show you what I've done and how it's made. Well here we are, here's my latest invention. Uh, I've got these little cross door cameras, you've seen these before, I've done videos on them and they're brilliant actually, they're very cheap to buy and you get a little clamp with it and what you can do, I'm going to fit it on my new invention all you do is just slide it onto there and then hopefully you should be seeing something through the camera overhead now this this is actually costs absolutely nothing to make I made this all from bits of scrap that I got out of my various sheds uh, there's a little block of wood here and there's two little knobs and there are two tubes, two large alloy tubes and two smaller alloy tubes and a little clamp on the bottom now, the, the, the way it works is, um, if you undo this knob here, whoops, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should have held that first, that loosens this, this tubes, these tubes along here, so that I can actually move the camera in and out at will, depending on how far I want it to go out. I can also move the camera up or down or around or all sorts of various positions. I'll just put it back where I was. And then the other knob, allows me to move the camera up or down as required as you can see hopefully from the camera picture here here you can see the little clamp I've used uh, this was off some other thing that got thrown away and I put these in my box of clamps because I thought it might come in handy for something and sure enough several years later it has come in handy for this job the whole thing cost me absolutely nothing to make it's all scrap I spent a bit of time on it and what I'm going to do now I'm going to take the thing down and I'll show you how it's made and what bits I used to make it just in case any just in case there's a slim chance that anybody else might want to make one. Okay, I've got the thing down now and I can show you how it works basically. Now first of all, uh, you've got two aluminium rods and there's a join there and the way I made this was quite simply um, I found a piece of doling that happened to fit exactly, almost perfectly, inside there. And so I put a small portion of doweling in the middle there to make that into a longer rod. So that was the start of that. That was simple to do. And on the end here, this is my clamp, as you can see. I don't know where it was from. It was from some old tool or something. And I thought it's ideal for this job for the simple reason that it had two threaded holes in it here. And I found that they were 3 16th Whitworth threads. And I happened to have some 3 16th one inch bolts which did the job perfectly and so I drilled the rod uh, and then put the screws through inside the end of here you'll see a bit of downing I've actually put a piece of this downing down in the tubes to stop it getting crushed and make a stronger thing otherwise over time you won't be able to tighten these up because you'll just keep crushing the tube so the downing will prevent that uh, it's very it's quite strong actually uh, and it's very lightweight being aluminium now the other piece we'll get to this uh, this is just some poles this is my friend who I mentioned in a lot of my videos, Adrian, he came over a, a month or two ago and said, oh, I dismantled this old glass table and there's these tubes and I thought you might like to put them in your stock. And they're very lightweight and aluminium. They're quite nice and it's a shame to throw them out. And he thought the same thing. And I chucked them in the shed in my usual place. And they're ideal for this job. And I, I had the problem of joining the two together. And all I did... Again, I looked in my shed and I found this broom handle material, which happens to be an almost perfect fit inside there. Look, it fits just in nicely. So with a little bit of insulation tape around there, I managed to get a, a, a tight joint in the middle there so that, um, that that's okay. So then I have my two poles. And the only other thing to do was to make up this 
this block to join the two together and it had to be adjustable and uh, I searched about in my woodshed and I found a block of beech which was actually um, came from an old mill where they made these um, what do you call them pepper grinders or, or salt and pepper things they made a beach with fittings on and they used to have rejects and my uncle used to get the rejects to burn on his fire and he gave me a few for wood turning and I thought well that's ideal so I had a piece about um, six inches long and I cut it in half to make this so I had the two pieces here and the one piece this piece was had some cracks in it so I used that as the test piece and you'll see I've drilled various holes in it just to, just to work out if it worked before I spoiled the best piece and it did so that was that so all I did really I, I bored a hole in here which is approximately one inch which is just perfect size for that for that particular rod and then in this side I bored a hole for the other tube uh, and, and that was fine then I had the problem of holding them in place I didn't want I wanted it to be adjustable so again I searched about in my junk boxes so I found these things look and they've got a nice little knob on the end with a fit in for your fingers and you've got a 5 16th Whitworth thread on the other end and I thought well that's brilliant and what it is actually I remember now where I got these from this was an old bed I broke up and these were holding the headboard on and I thought they're too nice to throw away so as usual I put them in my box and again it's come in handy you see most people would chuck these away it's junk isn't it but my view is there is no such thing as junk Junk is only something in the hands of the wrong people. Something always comes in handy. There, there's an old saying in Murphy's Law that if you throw something away, you'll need it next week. And that's absolutely true. So I got these and then I had to find a way of, of, of securing them by tapping a thread in here. Now normally, tapping into wood with a normal um, metal tap isn't very successful because it, the thread wouldn't last long. But then I reasoned there's not much force required to hold these just for a little tiny camera. Uh, and, and it is hardwood beach and it is quite hard. So and I tap the thread out like this lot. Using that. And surprisingly it fits perfectly. So there you have it. So you know I found that with that and these I had three of these um three of these bed fittings which I think did the job fine. So then I, I just cleaned it all up, I'd done the thread in. And I coated the whole thing in beeswax and I thought also it might help with the threads on here. So I put some beeswax on the on these screws and screwed them in just to sort of coat the inside of the thread. So I thought that might make them last longer. And I put a beeswax, a bit of beeswax in the tube as well. So they'd slide in and everything. And as you can see, it works fine. And, uh, the, you know, these things here, they certainly work. I mean, you don't need, obviously, if you did them up really, really, really tight... It would probably strip the thread in the wood, well it would eventually, but you don't need that do you because it's only to hold a little tiny camera so you know it's just to hold it in place really. It's all made from junk, costs absolutely nothing and it's used up some useful materials and hopefully it's made a very useful device because I can use it in my videos in future. At the moment I'm using my trusty enlarger one but I've got room on the bench for that you understand but when I'm in the other workshop on my fret saw uh, there isn't so much room for that, it's more awkward, and I thought this is going to be handy for other uses, so there you go. So, if you want to have a go at it, you know, you don't have to use exactly the same materials as me. Have a look in your shed, whatever you've got, and see if you can find something that will do the same job. I mean, you could make it in wood, actually. I mean, I did think about that, uh, making a wooden one, which would do the job just as well. Uh, the only other thing I should suggest is that if you've got it, obviously if you've got the camera on the top of this and you've got the boom piece right out, the weight of the camera might tend to push it down a little bit, but it's quite easy. You can easily put a weight on the other end or something, or you can just tie a bit of a bit of twine or anything, a bit of tape or something around the one end and tie it, anchor it down on the clamp here at the bottom, and, and that will stop it from leaning over, won't it? So, you know, all in all, you know, there's always a way around it, isn't there? So, you know, if you haven't got the metal bits, you have got to make them one in wood. There's no reason you can't make it in wood at all. And it will be useful if you do any filming. Well, I decided to do a slight modification on my camera holding boom. And that is to put a counterbalance on the end here. I was a little bit worried that when the boom's extended right out with the weight of the camera, although it's only light, it might actually bend it over slightly. And um, 
you know, give you won't get a parallel result. So I thought if I put something on the end here, like a counterbalance, it'll prevent that happening. It'll keep it steady as well. So what I've done, I've cut a, a beach block out, which will fit on the end of the boom. But even that might not be heavy enough. So what I've done, I found a bit of lead piping in my shed. And I've bored a, another hole in the wood block. And I'm going to pop the lead piping in here. I shall hammer that inside the beach block. And then I've cut out two little... Uh, beach covers for it on my fret saw and I shall glue those in so the lead will be hidden inside and then hopefully that should be a nice heavy weight which will do the job hopefully so uh, we'll find out won't we right well there we are the finished counterweight I'll just pop it on the boom and see if it works all right there you go just put it on the end tighten the little knob up and of course you can adjust it accordingly where in whatever position you want it but if you bring the boom out it'll balance it out won't it you know and, and tend to help keep the camera steady and when this is extended as far as it'll go that again will help counterbalance the camera well that's the principle anyway so we shall have to wait and see I should be using it in my next video by the way anyway uh, thanks very much for watching my videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one bye for now thanks very much bye <laughs>